those are not native trees. We'll go ahead and skip this and get it on the way back. A lot of people use the canyon here for farming and also to get away from their enemies. So it was like a hiding place. They didn't live here. Year Anasazis occupied the canyon first from 200 BC and they stayed around until the early 1300 AD. So each year we have these guide trainings and archaeologists are invited to these guide trainings. So archaeologists believe that the Anasazis might have died because of a drought. According to the tree ring, they say there was a 28 year drought here. So others, other archaeologists believe that the Anasazis might have turned back into other tribes. So after the Anasazis left, the Hopis came from the late 1300s to the early 1600s. The Hopis occupied the canyon for several years at a time. They maybe came here for four years, did their farming, left for several more years, came back here again. So they used the canyon here mostly for farming and to hide from their enemies. So this was a hiding place for them. After the Hopis left, they relocated about 85 miles southwest of Canyon de Shade. So on the Navajo Reservation, there's a small portion of land that was set aside for the Hopis. That's where they relocated on the mesas. So present day, you'll find the Hopis on the Navajo Reservation. After the Hopis left, the Navajos came. From the late 1600s to the, to the present day, the Navajos still used the canyon. But I remember growing up inside the canyon here back in the 70s, 80s, early 90s. About 100 families, they used to live inside the canyon anywhere from March to November. But as the years went by, the younger generation we were, we got introduced to a lot of these modern technologies and conveniences like fast food, internet, cell phone, iPods. None of those work in the canyon. No electricity and no running water. So the younger generation, they don't come back into the canyon as often as they, as we used to when we were growing up. Now. I would say only about 15 families continue to use their farmland inside the canyon here. But back when I was growing up here, I would say about 100 families, they used to live in the canyon. So a lot has changed over the years.
check it out. What's that? Okay. These carvings here were done by the Navajos. What these Navajo horse riders are trying to do is they're trying to kill this deer. And how they kill the deer is they dig a sinkhole. They chase the deer into the sinkhole, throw corn pollen up its nose to suffocate it. So the air passage will swell up. The reason why is because the Navajos, they use the deer hide, the deer skin for ceremonies. Also medicine bags and clothing. So they don't want to put holes in the hide and also blood on the hide. So that's how they kill the deer. Instead of using arrow, bone arrow, rifle, or maybe guns, maybe slingshot. They don't want to destroy the hide. So those are Navajo carvings. Okay. Yeah. Carvings here were put up by the Hopis. This is a clan system. This is how they identified themselves. There is the bear paw, the bear clan, the chain link fence here. This is the snake clan. Human figure, this is the snake dancer. Hopis were known for their snake dances. It's a rain dance. Then there's two figures here, the moth and the butterfly and the pottery and the figure eight. These are all Hopi carvings. The figure eight might have been like the third aisle. That's how the, excuse me, the Hopis kept track of time. The two skinny horses and the Spanish conquistador. These are Navajo carvings. Okay, and then there's a human figure right here. Maybe a pregnant woman. This one here was done by the Anasazi people. Further up, you see two more figures. Anasazi carving. Then you see the frog, the fertility frog here. Going across, you see a human figure here. Very faint, you can barely see it. Then there's a row of ducks here. There should be four. Then there's a human figure here. A triangular shaped human figure here. Then there's a duck. And then more ducks here in the back. The big horn sheep. The cocopelli. The snake. And the snake. These ones here were done by the Anasazi people. So their carvings are much older. They're carved in. And those are the ones we call the petroglyphs. Mm -hmm. the Coco Pelli, the flute player, the rain god, the fertility god. Uh -huh. And then there's the frog, the positive handprints, the negative handprints, and the snake. And then the stars, a lot of drawings, a lot of paintings inside the canyon here, of the cave. These are all painted on, so they're the pictographs. Uh -huh. And they use gypsum. Uh -huh. to paint this on so this is all natural mm -hmm. positive negative handprints anasazi carvings so a lot of these drawings are underneath the caves mm. so the cave is protecting them from the wind and water right mm. but when these drawings are gone they're completely gone uh -huh. mm -hmm. some of them are starting to wash off mm. and fade away This is the good moon and the bad moon. The bad moon has the negative handprints. Uh -huh. A lot of bad weather, cold weather. Mm -hmm. And then inside the cave, you see two figures, the male and the female dancers uh -huh. where? in the cave. Ah, oh, the inside. Mm -hmm. the yellow. Yes, yellow. They might have used um, sap, maybe plants and herbs. They uh -huh. mixed it with the gymsum to get uh -huh. the yellow. Some of them are red. Some of them are in turquoise and blue. Wow. Mm -hmm.